What's up, everybody? It is the 13th, and you're watching This Week of Gear Report, uh, where we talk about everything. Present, past, future reviews, trucks, guns, a little bit of everything. Uh, who do we have here? Well, you, you probably know. There it is. That's what I wanted. Yeah, by request. That, that's what I wanted. I didn't know how to do it. I'm, I'm low tech. I'm just the face. Uh, let's introduce everybody. You know, you know that guy over there to the left, or yeah, whatever to my right. Uh, who's that guy down there? Ah, okay. I'm the camping pickle. The camping. The guy pickle. that uh, goes out into the woods without guns or Humvees. Crazy, crazy. It's not really recommended. I I agree. Who would do that? Who would do that? All right. And then uh, Caddy Corner, Jason. I'm Jason. I go everywhere with my Humvee. And oh, guns? Yeah. I'm from New York. Oh, so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> my, you probably get that a lot. Everybody says that, don't they? But I do have my machine gun shop uh, t-shirt on. I like it. I like it. Oh, then, uh, yeah. Somebody else just got in. Mitch. Uh-uh. I didn't. What? You're the show, buddy. I can remove you if I wanted, though, but I won't. <laughs> He's drunk with power already. <laughs> I am. I'm going to mute everybody. No, I'm just kidding. Two um, minutes into the party. Great. All right. Well, let's, uh, I guess we'll get it going. Jeff, do you want to say anything? No. Everybody knows who you are. Yeah, I do want to say something. I, okay. I would like to thank TJ for volunteering. Uh, before even ha having to be voluntold, he stepped up and volunteered to host the show this week, and I really appreciate that. I think it'll shake things up. It'll make things more interesting. This is going to be the best show we've had this year, so I'm or excited. Worst. Yeah, make it happen, Captain. It's a tough call. I can go either way. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> it's not the first time those shots have been fired. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, I know. <laughs> All right, I guess we're going to uh, start. We'll start talking about some stuff. Everybody's out there. Who's out there? Buck, Honcho, Honcho, yeah, whatever. Jacob's out there. I see him. He won't bug me. He'll bug you, Jeff. So you can just keep picking on Jeff, Jacob. I gave Jacob a present yesterday. Did you? Um, oh, one, did you? One, of the, uh, one of the gear report mug things. So now that he's got the present, he doesn't have to be nice. I was going to say he'll be nice this week, but now that he has it, he has he's enough motivation to be. All right. So here, I'll show you what the motivation could be. Um, he's going to, he's going to bribe us now. I'm just going to bribe him. I, I have another Ooh. knife that he's reviewed. So Ooh. we'll see if he wants to play nice to get his hands on another cutting implement, a clip <laughs> folder 3.0 knife from UST. So we shall see. I'm not above bribery, folks. You're not. You're not. All right. Well, let's get the let's talk about something. Let's talk about the what do we got? The Caldwell Emacs Power Cords. Who did this one? Oh, yeah. Jason's not here. So uh, the other Jason, we have an abundance of Jasons Jason. here at Gear Report. Right. Yeah. So this one we refer to. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we refer to him as the Rogue Banshee. So um, or at least that's what he refers to himself as. Um, he has uh, previously reviewed a different set of earbuds from Caldwell that he really liked. And I got to figure out where uh, shadows, that's what they were. The shadows earbuds. You, there's a link in here if you want to go uh, learn about those. Uh, so then Caldwell asked him, Hey, can we send you this other set that they call power cords? And he reviewed those and let's see, he gave them four out of five gears. That's pretty good. Uh, that's they weren't good. perfect. I think he was hoping for a little bit, something that felt a little little higher than that 22 NRR rating. Uh, but overall, I think he had a pretty good experience with them and was um, 
I think I'll say a fan, although maybe he likes the other one slightly better. But, um, you know, good good hearing protection that also has uh, Bluetooth built in. It, it can be pretty cool, I think. So, actually, you know what? It's funny. I think he said he, he liked them, wears the shadows more often. Maybe that's just for casual wear. Uh, but he only gave them a 3.5 and he gave these a 4. So, if you want to understand what in the world is going on there, Maybe you should go read the article, cause uh, or watch the video. What? Yeah, watch the video. He's got a video there. He does. Yeah, they, look, they look neat. Little little carrying package. This throw them, some of the throw in the truck for me. Yeah, yeah, that'd be handy. There he goes. He talks with his hands too. All right. No, well, I knew I liked him for a reason. That's my Jeff. Yep. Okay. I will block the screen. There we go. Right. <laughs> What would you like to do next? I'm waiting on I'm waiting on my internet to load up here. Oh, let's talk about the um, the best M lock hand stops for AR pistols and rifles. Who did that one? Who's that one? Yeah, yeah that was um, that was Caleb. Who you Caleb, know? I I got to tell you, I I get a little disappointed that Caleb never shows up like ever. I don't think he's ever been on this week at Gear Report, even on weeks when he's had multiple articles published. And and he's actually at a point right now where he's doing a little writing every day and looking to have more stuff published because as the hunting editor during deer hunting season here in North Carolina, which just ended two weeks ago, he was just slam busy all the time because uh, he's in the woods all the time during hunting season. So now that hunting season's over, he's got a bunch of recent experiences and things to write about. Uh, so this is the first of a series from him. And uh, I think if we want to get him on to talk about any of these, I'm going to have to personally pull fiber optic cable out to the little mountain that he lives on, because that's the only way he's going to get internet that will support it, you know, the speeds required to be on a show. It might be cheaper to drive out there, kidnap them, take them back to headquarters. Yeah. I was like, as a yeah. kid, people do stuff. You are the, the grand the grand guy up there, the, the head honcho. You can always head put like a, route, a router on a, a random bear out there and just sort of let him use that as some Wi-Fi. Isn't there some Humvee attachment you can put on and make it like a, a roving base? Satellite base know. or something? Jason, do you know of anything? <laughs> well, you could always put a uh, one of those, uh, the ones you have on a camper, just throw it on the back and uh, go live from your truck. Mm, Problems see, solved right there. Ideas all over the place. Jacob Perkins was going to be nice today anyways. Oh. Ah, okay. What? Wow. He wasn't really enticed by it. Hmm. Maybe I'll review that one then, sucker. Maybe not. We'll see. Sorry to interrupt, TJ. But anyhow, right. uh, since Caleb never makes it here for these, unfortunately, because the internet is terrible where he lives, um, I will tell you it's what it looks like. It is an article rating um, various different hand stops and AFGs. What's an AFG? Anyone? Really? It's uh, fire the forward grip. Grip. angled foregrip. Boom. There you go. Angled foregrip. Yeah. So um, I believe any article that starts off with, first of all, let me state that I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> you know, it's going to be good. If you want to see why he said that, please go check out the article. Give Caleb a high five virtual or, you know, in real life, whatever works for you when you see him, because he has bumped up his... Um, his photography game for his gun pictures. They're, they're looking pretty good. Yeah. Uh, oh, and that looks like he's got one of those Vortex LVPOs on there. Mmm, snazzy. Um, <laughs> he's fancy over there. He is, he is. So you can see that he talks about the angle four grips, the... Um, uh, he defines terms. So when I ask what's AFG, you know, it was a loaded question because he has terms defined down here so that uh, you can better understand because there are some really bizarre rules around foregrips and pistols, AR pistols and rifles. And if you put one on the wrong thing, you make it illegal for some don't, ridiculous don't bureaucratic reason. 
but he's got a, a few different options in here the um bcm keg and uh mlock hand stop kit for magpul and a few others as you scroll through really cool thing about an article like this is whenever he gets a new one he will be able to add it and this article will just keep right on growing so that's pretty cool you see what four or five in here so far it looks like which one should you buy yep you're gonna have to read the article to find out you Boom. can decide yep i like them all i've got a, i think i've got a different one on every ar I got the angled angled for for grip i got a hand stop i got the the whole grip with the little batteries that are inside with the mm. pressure for the uh the streamlight i like them all each gun's different it's its own little personality All right. Majestic Hammock. Mr. Corey, what's up, my friend? I figured you knew who that was. Once, once the hammock popped up, I was like, I'm out. All right. Uh, who are we up to now? Mitch. Is this a Mitch? One Tigress chest rig panel. Yeah, it's just a quick review. The One Tigress uh, chest placard adapter. It's just a, basically a flat pl placard you can put pretty much any configuration of One Tigress. This one came with a three mag pouch, and it's got the uh, Molly webbing, secure buckles on the sides, adjustable. It's easy to use, quick to throw on. If you just want to carry like a flashlight, maybe a um, fixed knife or, or any variation of magazines, but... It's nice and it's configurable. It works with several of their other adapters so that you can uh, switch out that front plate um, or front placard. I should say there's no actual armor in it. It's just a chest rig. But yeah, it's pretty cool and uh, would work great if you just want to take it to the range um, or, you know, spending some time doing some testing or, or work. But uh, yeah, I liked it. So get out there and read it. And if you like it, pick one up. Looks like a good one for hunting. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, like I said, it's lightweight. It's not very bulky. It's got a lot of attachments up on the shoulder straps. You can do Molly attachments there if you wanted to put something uh, up close to you. Um, and again, it's got the double uh, buckles on either side. So it, it yeah. stays, it stays pretty fixed. I've got a place that a couple places that I hunt that <laughs> that would be awesome. Put, put a little chest uh, holster on the front of it and, uh, That'd be really good. Then I've got one place that I only hunt if I am literally wearing body armor because um, their neighbors are a little less than responsible. But so this wouldn't work there. But just an aside. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. It's neat. All right. Where are we off to now? Oh, now it's the, this is this is the one Jeff's been waiting for. The uh, is this one? Film out adult crew advisory physical preparation. Yeah, this was. Uh, if you're not ashamed, don't go. Am I allowed to say on the internet that this is a come to Jesus article? Did, is that going to get me in trouble? Um, I hope not. I just said it. But no. um, this this is intended to help us old people who take young people out on uh, extended backpacking trips in the wilderness. It, it's meant to help us wrap our heads around exactly what we're getting into and how uh, miserable it's going to be if we don't prepare for it properly. So it uh, really talks about the things that, uh, the, the challenges that you face out on the trail and um, how to prepare for them so that you won't ruin the trip for everyone that you're with because you can't keep up and you feel like you're falling over and dying and and uh, this one was with tons of contributors. I tried something new on this one where um, in the Facebook group that I run for Philmont Scout Ranch Trek information and prep and that kind of stuff, it's mainly adults, uh, a few scouts, but mainly adults that are in there. And, and I posed the question uh, uh, or, or really kind of the, 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 the bulk of this article I posted as a... Um, you know, hey, y'all need to be aware that backpacking at, you know, 12,000 feet where you're going eight or 10 miles a day 
for a week and a uh, week and a half is going to kick your ass. So you need to be prepared or you're going to be miserable. If you're prepared, it'll be awesome. If you're not prepared, it's going to be miserable. And I said, what, what do you do to prepare? So the bulk of the meat of this article is the other folks from the group chiming in to say, hey, here's what I do. And it's, it's really cool to see uh, how aggressive some people are and uh, some of the different ideas and some of the different concerns that they have and how to how to prepare for them even a couple videos in here um long house conditioning interesting can nope. you let the kids carry the heavy stuff and you guys just go on i mean it doesn't work um, that way you know that's one of the risks really is that uh People will get take that the opposite direction and be like, oh, I'm the big, strong adult. I've got to carry some of the extra stuff. <laughs> when in actuality, the big is the adult. only sport on the planet where you brag of how small your stuff is. Yeah, but, but it's different. Honestly, a lot of these people who I'm telling you, dude, you would be absolutely blown away if you went and spent a little time on the trail at Philmont and saw some of the adults that come by l literally carrying 75, 80 pound packs at, you know, hiking. Th there are some days you start at 9,000 feet, you end over 12,000. And it's like, you're, why you want to carry that pack? And it's like, they're bragging about, Oh yeah, man, my pack weighs this much. And uh, it's absolutely crazy. They're going to give themselves heart attacks right there on the trail. Um, I mean, you and you invited me to go along couple years ago and that was really before i went through my ultralight phase and i was looking at the the loadout list of everything that had to carry and i'm like i don't need that yeah i don't need that the hell would i need that for i don't need that yep and just the list of things you had to carry it was no thanks it completely turned me off and now that i'm running ultralight weights and things are I'm I'm shaving grams because I've already shaved all the ounces and pounds off. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Don't understand any of it. I would just throw on everything I needed or wanted. What's yeah. going on, LT? Nice of you to join us, man. And then you guys would just laugh at me. I would laugh at you, TJ. You would. You'd be like, what do you need that for? I'd be like, that's for my, my bougie coffee. What's that for? Oh, that's for my bourbon. What's this for? That's for hey. my cigar. My cigar. Hey. My you can't take I, bourbon bring a, I bring a coffee grinder. You can't bring I bourbon know. on backpacking? No, no, I'm on a scout trip. Uh, what <sighs> happens if you live hiking in, in Hiking in general. Hiking in general. general. Hiking in general. Oh, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. What happens if you live at 5380 at... at uh, it's a little bit over a mile above sea level. Yep. Um, you acclimate easier. Yeah. Really? Because base camp is about a thousand feet above that. And you're going up and down from there, uh, mainly up. So um, for those people, it's not that bad. We actually had an article a week or two ago that uh, Scott O'Mary wrote about uh, it was probably three weeks ago. Flatlander's Guide to Acclimating to mm -hmm. Altitude for Backpacking. Because it's a big deal. It's a real issue. And it jacked me up last time I was out there. We had a really steep hike the second day on the trail. And uh, I, I've got some video of myself, you know, holding the camera at myself, trying to talk. And I was slurring words. I looked drunk. And I absolutely was not. <laughs> But halfway up this mountain, a really steep climb, and I was I was having some serious issues. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. I, uh, it takes about two or three days for me to get uh, acclimated. Uh, otherwise, if I try to do it on the first day, it's uh, just going to wipe you out. Yeah, yeah. I live I live at sea level. All everything's high to me, so I'd have to acclimate slowly. Hiking and shooting and shooting drills. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll, that'll mess people up trying to do active things at altitude if they're not used to it. And it takes a while to acclimate. So that's uh, one of the one of the things we talk about a little bit in that article this week, but especially in Scott's a couple weeks ago. All right, sir. Are we ready to uh, to look at some Humvee picks? Somebody got a, oh, a new Humvee? Oh, I'm ready. I know. I know. You're, Jeff's excited about it. Jason, Jason's ready to talk about it, too. I don't believe that much. <laughs> It's like, what'd you get? What'd you get? Pickles when slacking on his job. No shirt. Yeah. 
<clears throat> oh yeah, the the holiday. So yeah, the we holidays. Yeah, the holidays. We can call it Man Crush Monday, so G twenty three can show up and talk to Pickle. <laughs> yeah, the holidays. Holidays have been difficult around holidays. here. It's, it's been a it's been an interesting winter. Oh, a travel pack for a takedown carbine. Man, I wish Jose Juan was here because he has one that's awesome, and I'm blanking on what it is. Oh, I can picture it too, um, but I can't remember. I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Uh, if you search gear report for uh, a takedown backpack, I bet you'll find the review of that it, it, probably three years ago. But that was the coolest little pack. Um, anyhow, sorry, I can't give you more. Yeah, and, and it was not 100% gray, man, but more like athletic looking backpack. And yeah, not- that's your adaptive tactical copper basin. Oh, you found it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, a, he's a tech guy. Man, I could you, you got the screen up. Why don't you share the screen real quick? Yeah. It's like Jeff. He's got 10,000 tabs open. He's like, I found it. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about looking for it. Hobo Jeff shaved. He did. And cut hair too. Cause it was, it was looking gray. I was like, Holy crap. I look ancient. So I, that stuff's coming off. Shave. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's what I was talking about right there. A little athletic looking. Um, awesome little backpack. He gave it four gears. Four gears. Yep. Fits right in there. How cute. I think it is big enough for a uh, like a AR, maybe even a carbine. AR pistol Definitely an AR pistol. Broken down. I'll have to check it out. Yes, that's kind of what we were implying, Defense Tech. <laughs> we're here to help. Yep, yep. Yeah, We'll do the work for you. Check it out. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. But uh, Just ask a question. We'll pull it up on screen. It's fine. Let's see here. Yep. You know, is Jeff, are you going to work on the, uh, the auction screen for the, uh, Oh yeah, yeah. I'll get it. I'll get it. You, you got to remember, I have a very short attention span and limited mental capacity. That's why I reminded. Yep. All right. Uh, why don't we make this full screen? No. Yes. Mm, how should we do yeah. this? I want to put Jason up on the screen. All right. How about if I drag him up here and then do that Well, that boom look at that oh but now he's wow. big in the humvee small mm. <laughs> how do we change that don't ask me you're be- that's beyond my scope maybe we're just coming back to this one i don't know oh no it went away jeff he's a mess oh here we go there you go all right so jason you want to tell us why we have this beautiful camouflage beast on the screen so when i woke up this morning i didn't think i would be bidding on a truck but i uh won the highest bid on this one today and uh now i uh have to figure out where to find all the parts and uh get this thing on the road i was really excited to get a uh a 11 series truck and uh yeah, it's going to need a lot of work, but should be a fun project. Yeah, I think you did well on this. Uh, seeing what they're going for, I saw uh, there was only one or two runners out of Georgia that I saw this afternoon. I didn't see the ones that went early. But the running trucks, like at 1123, which is not a turbo, you can tell this one, um, the extended nose right here, um generally indicates it's a turbo um not always right jason (laughs) uh because he just converted his non-turbo truck to have that hood on it but uh but but this is a turbo truck um and i saw a non-turbo truck go for i stopped watching it was over 18 it was like 18 2 and it wasn't finished yet it still had two minutes left on the five minute auction so the runners were going for crazy money today, um, you know, compared to the non-runners, because this is a newer, nicer 
model of the truck and um and i think you got a really really reasonable deal on it i'm interested to uh see uh it's designed to carry that shelter so it has a bunch of suspension things on it that uh are enhanced so uh -huh. it'll be cool to go through and uh, look at the difference um uh, i think I was reading up on the uh, transfer case that's uh, missing. It has a different gear ratio. So, oh. uh, but uh, I'm not planning on carrying uh, a shelter, but it has a, uh, it could carry 5,000 uh, pound payload. So uh, wow. it's an improvement from my 998. Oh yeah. Yeah, so for the people who may be looking at this going, wait a second, you paid money for this thing? Every truck that comes from auction, they strip parts off. They're filthy, dirty. They look bad. Um, so what, what you have to look for when you're looking at these auction trucks is, is you're really looking for the bones underneath. You know, do you see rust? Do you see dents? Do you see evidence of abuse? And I already looked over all the pictures for this truck. And um, honestly, it looks pretty clean. I mean, it looks like it's got... Uh, what do they say? It's got good bones underneath. Um, and like the, the taillights are missing. You know, pe people get bent over little missing things like doors and taillights. But those are easy and cheap compared to some of the other stuff. Um, you know, like looking at the, the airlift bumper, the yeah. uh, that's $1,000 right there. You know, the mud it flaps is. are $150. The, yeah. uh, when you start adding up all the little parts when they're missing. I'm just happy that I'm going to have air conditioning. Oh yeah. It, it's a thousand bucks before you factor freight in because you can't just ship those. So probably twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 total to get that bumper on the back. And yeah, that's cool. That it's got air already built in. Oh, and it's got the newer, um, vent system, air conditioning system. That's cool. The upgraded one. It's funny. The weird part is that it doesn't say what year truck this is. And uh, right. I thought that was odd. Yeah. So you got to get a picture of the data plate. Um, if I remember right, no, it was a different one. Never mind. I, I, I bid on four or five trucks today, although I'll deny that if anyone in my <laughs> house asked me. Um, but you got such a good deal. It was like, ooh, maybe I'd get something cheap. And guess what? I couldn't, uh, well, you but I tried. The first truck that went up in Georgia this morning at about 10.05, I think it went for $4,800. Oh. And uh, that was just the opening bid. I don't know. I didn't even look at it, but I couldn't believe that a truck had closed that cheap. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, uh, and I said, well, maybe today is the day to actually start bidding because half the time, like you said, they're in the 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the headlights are fairly cheap. You need turn signals. You need a windshield, wiper arms and blades, you know, a couple hundred bucks for all that stuff, Maybe two, three hundred bucks for all that, and then pressure wash it, and it looks like a pretty decent truck already. So yeah, I was happy with uh, the the hood. looks like it's uh, not damaged. Uh, I actually have the restored ECV hood that I'm going to put on my truck in my uh, garage waiting to get the uh, winch plate and extension arms to put that on the 998. Did, uh, did you notice, did you notice that you've got the little infrared black, instead of the normal blackout light, it's got the little infrared uh, light. Yes, below I did it. see that. The, uh, I thought it was a speck or something on there until I zoomed in. Yeah. The, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, we were discussing, I'm going to need to uh, either put in a whole new power pack or work on uh, trying to fix this. And I think uh, you're right that it's probably a hedge my bets and just put in a known uh, power pack. Yeah. Well, because your, your turbo, the, the crossover, the manifolds, the intake pipe, all that are missing. Yep. So the engine's going to be full of water. Yeah. But look at that. Those are half doors. You have rear half doors, it looks like. Yeah, that's Those awesome. are like that's that's fifteen hundred bucks worth of doors sitting in the back of your truck right there. 
the uh, yeah, like I said, this thing it's it's pretty cool looking. The uh, and uh, it is set up for the armor, so it has all the spacers. I was looking at the exhaust when I zoomed in, and it has the like inch and a half uh, spacers so that it could fit the armor plating. Oh, okay. uh, you can see where the windshield wiper arms, uh, it has the extensions on those because uh, the uh, it, the window had armor. I have oh, to figure out right. yeah. how does one fill all these holes from the armor? Oh, I haven't filled mine. Mine's just ventilated. <laughs> um, and honestly, the heater, it's crazy the heat that, that the newer trucks put out. Um, and until it got below freezing, I was just toasty warm all the time. Once it got below freezing, now it's like, oh, okay, I'm starting to feel the breeze down below where the Swiss cheese holes are. Um, and you can't quite see them in there. Um, but yeah, I've got I've got a whole new instrument panel for you. And uh light switch on the left instrument panel on the right that are those should be plug and play for you yeah i'm so you know it didn't say anything about the uh the control box the start box i don't know if uh if this is going to have one or if uh the uh gonna have to start off with uh a new one yeah i think you're gonna have to get a new one based on how many connectors the the big silver metal connectors on the left side of the dash or hanging down. I'm pretty sure that at least one of those hooks up to the start box. So that, that is probably gone. Yeah. The one that's under the hood, I saw that that was when I saw that one was disconnected. I thought, yeah, pretty much uh, going to need one. Yeah. The, uh, so it's like I said, I'm really excited. A dual voltage, uh, 200 amp, uh, alternator mm -hmm. and you know, all these new things to play with. Yep. I know what I'll be doing for the next uh, year or so. Yeah, yeah, it'll be quicker than that, really. Um, they and it it looks like an incredible mess looking at the the wires hanging out of the dash, but every wire's labeled. It looks like a couple have been cut, but most of them are still there, and they have the little metal tags on them with the wire numbers. Yep. So you find the wiring diagram that'll tell you what every single one of those is, except for those two that are cut. Those are the ones that are left. You put new connectors on it. The panel that goes in, you just hook the wire, plug the wires in, put, put it in place. I don't want to jinx things and tell you that you'll have that panel installed in an hour. But, it, you know, if everything goes well, hour and a half and all that will be cleaned up and looking great. If, if yeah, everything doesn't go well, then who knows? But yeah. The funny part is that the uh, electrical part is the, uh, I enjoy doing the electrical stuff on the Humvee. And yeah. uh, so that, that'll be the easy stuff. Uh, Good. Good. Well, come and, on down. I got some stuff to do. <laughs> the, uh, and I have the mount for the uh, tachometer. The, uh, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. cool. Cause I've wanted to get a tack. So. Good. Yeah, I felt bad that I have, you're, you're missing the windshield wiper motor back here. Yep. And I have one. And I actually plugged it into my truck and it's dead. So oh, it's like, dang, dang. I, I thought I was going to solve that problem for you too, but, uh, but it's dead. So I'm probably just going to chuck it because I, I don't know. I don't even know where to start on fixing those. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Uh... I didn't even think you could take those apart. Yeah. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, definitely. I'd say yank that engine and transmission and transfer case, put a new one in and you'll be good to go. You, you see rust all over that one. I, I think it's, uh, they stole parts off of it because it was toast. Yeah. Yep. But otherwise it looks like it's got good bones. I don't see dents or anything. looks like it's in pretty good, shape aside from the missing stuff yep. so that, that'll be a neat project can't can't wait to see what you do with it yeah i was thinking that the uh transfer case probably was taken because of that uh ratio geared thing if it mm. was uh toast but i'm surprised like the with the fuel tank and you know a lot of wacky pieces disconnected mm. yeah yeah well um I don't know if they do it in commercial aviation, but when I was working the flight line in the Air Force, 
we always had what we called a can bird and that was the plane that we would cannibalize so they, they would designate one plane and you steal parts off of that one so that there weren't just random parts coming up missing on other planes yeah we had a the a previous company we had a fleet of uh, airplanes and there was one that uh wasn't flying and uh we would take uh, parts and cycle them to uh, other ones. And since it was coming off of an airplane, it was uh, all serviceable parts. Yeah. So you'd have to worry about the tags and everything. You just documented this part off, this part on. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, no TSO crap or anything. Nice. Okay. Well, I'm sure the non Humvee people are like, how long are they going to talk about that? Listen, there's only 82 pictures. Simmer down, people. Simmer down. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Anyhow, so so this is this will give you a good idea of uh, uh, the magnitude of project. It, it looks worse than it is. Seriously, I believe. I, I don't I, know. I it looks pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only thing the only thing I see like in this picture, there are these two rock guards missing over here, and it's kind of dirty. That's it. Little pressure washer, bolt those two strips back in place. It looks good again. And of course, the missing exhaust there is a little bit of a problem. I suppose exhaust pipe and exhaust the missing exhaust. transfer case. That's problematic. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll concede that. Yeah. Kind of need that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of neat that that adapter is on there. Huh. Um, still got an oil filter. That's a bonus. Don't be looking for parts for your truck, Jeff. I see you. Yeah, no, I'm looking for opportunities to get parts out of my parts room and onto Jason's truck. Out of Jeff's crazy Humvee lot. Yep. Yep. All right. There we go. Anything else you want to say about your recent acquisition or purchase, Jason? Uh, no, the, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun actually just to go through it and figure out, uh, I guess, the scavenger hunt is part of the fun. Yeah. So you're, the truck you have now, you bought that from a private party, right? Yes. Yeah, so the 998 that I have was, uh, well, I think you had it on uh, Show Us Your Humvee uh -huh. a couple months after I got it, before I started doing projects on the vehicle. And it was a runner. It was in good shape. The uh, It had a nice restoration. I really picked a nice truck. And uh, the I've been jealous when I'm on uh, the forums on Facebook, see everybody picking up these trucks and working on their projects. And I wanted to pull the trigger and try that. And uh, so I think it'll just be that much better to start with nothing and uh, build the truck up because I know I love mine and I'm proud of all the work I've done on that truck, but I think I'll have a different connection with this truck. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you'll be one of the few people that has a Humvee that has actual armor on the roof. They stripped that. When mine came through, they stripped the armor off. So you have a two layer roof. It's an aluminum roof underneath and then the, the AR 500 steel armor roof on top of it. Oh wow, um, which is cool. The uh, yeah, it's definitely a uh, a cool uh, a cool look. I wish it was a four man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Thank you for sharing that. All right, TJ. We're good. We done. I'll be talking now. Because I know we can talk more if you want. I know. No, I know you can. I know nothing about these things. They're green. They're loud. They run rough. Really fun to drive. I know. I've seen I've seen Jeff drive him. He's he's always happy when he's when he's driving them, smiling, running over things, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I have some running over stuff with the Humvee video that I need to edit and put out. Like I was gonna call it running over stuff with a Humvee. Yeah. And it's uh, a laptop. A long time ago we talked about that. A laptop, some cell phones. I'm trying to remember what all I had. I think there were some roller skates and a bunch of ice stuff. Like I took 
uh, different, uh, like a sour cream container and other, you know, I can't believe it's not butter and water and food coloring and mix it up and froze it. So I had these blocks of ice and they crush and go everywhere. It's awesome. Uh, I may have to edit that video now so people can see it. See, that's the Humvee talk that way. I'm good. I'm in. You got me. Yeah. Run over some things. We got it. Wait, we lost we, pickle. We did lose pickle because it wasn't camping stuff. He's done. He's done. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're done with, uh, so that's all our, our reviews and how So now we're, what do we got coming up? Who's got, who's got anything coming up? Mitch? Mitch? Negative Ghost Rider. Not currently anything sitting in the queue. I'm in the process of uh, returning to school. Mm. Nice. So nice. I will be part-time school as I continue doing other fun stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm still got, you know, got some ideas and things I like to review. I'll probably uh, talk to uh, Jeffy Jeff offline, see if he has some ideas. I did get contacted. You remember, or, you know, uh, Zero Shoes? Yeah. I got contacted. I think a few people got contacted by them uh, to do some reviews. They have some more new new products coming out soon for uh, spring. Right. And uh, so I was looking over some of the, a couple of them are hiking boots. And one of them was like a water shoe or a water sports shoe that they have. Hmm. So if I'll, I can send you that and you can take a look at it. But I, I was thinking of maybe seeing if uh, I can get something from them. Yeah. Just fill out the form. Um, yep, yep, so I have mixed feelings there. I love zero shoes and I need some hiking shoes and I got it and I looked through it, but the form's long and I'm lazy. Yep. <laughs> so what I've always done before is I just send Steven a note, say, Hey, here's what I'm looking for in this size. You pick the color. Here's the address. And it shows up. So if he's going to make me fill the form out, I'm like, come on, really? <laughs> I don't like busy work. It's like, you've already got my address and contact information and all of that. I thought you were telling Mitch to fill out the form for you. No, 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 but you definitely get you some. I like, I like zero shoes. I think they're kind of awesome. And it is a neat program they have where they invite people to review stuff. What are you, uh, what are you messing there with uh, Jeff? What you uh, lightsabers. On? Yeah. Okay. Anti lightsabers. No, it's uh so we talked a few weeks ago, about I got some radios, right? These are uh, TID radios, what it's called. And it's like a uh, UV5R clone, something like that. And this one's got the uh, Nagoya NA771 antenna. It's a little upgraded extended antenna. Um, I haven't actually done anything with this radio yet. This antenna came off of this radio, which is the Baofeng UV82. That, and I've got a bunch of these that I take to scout camp, and we have a program for the frequencies that have been assigned to the scout camp. So it's completely against the rules for the camp. And it just occurred to me that now Jacob Perkins knows that I have this, and he is one of the higher ups at the camp now. And I probably shouldn't have admitted that because uh, we're not supposed to have all these frequencies. But you know what? I do. So anyhow, I got this new antenna and they called it the, uh, it's the Liu Lam, L-Y-U-L-A-M, uh, high gain tactical antenna. And I thought, you know, antenna sounds kind of neat, but then they said tactical. I was like, oh yeah, yes, please. Tactical. I'll take it. What makes uh, it tactical? Okay. What's special about it? Um, it's tactical. That's what's special about it, dude. Because they on. put the word tactical in the front. Yep. Come on, man. Yeah, it's written right here. <laughs> tactical. <laughs> Look at that. That's it. So, Done. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's flat like the military antennas. This one doesn't fold over. I think they have another model that folds over. Uh, so it's even longer. Because um, I hear that matters. Um, so they say. Yeah, that's, that's what I hear. So anyhow, um, I'm going to be testing this soon uh, because I think I'm going to follow suit with Clover Tech and uh, Ghost Tactical who have both been doing you know the ham radio stuff so they're official. Uh, I've only been able to use this on the camp assigned frequencies 
because otherwise, you know, they, they have permission for people to use it on their property on those frequencies. So that's what we use them for. Uh, I want to be able to use them away from the summer camp property to, um, wait a second. I got an online, uh, license. What's up? I think you just take the course online and, uh, get your license. I it's think like so. Bucks. That's what yeah, I don't everybody know in your house. I hope Clover so. just got his. Clover got, got one license. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, well, the other thing you can program FRS frequencies in here and those you're supposed to get a, you, you pay a little bit and you get a license. It's good for your whole family. Uh, but then when you go up to the ham radio frequencies, you have to have the ham radio license. And I don't know what all is involved in that, but I know that him and Co Ghost sure talked about it a lot. So it seems like it was a pretty hard test and they had to study a lot for it. And Did you see out. Jacob's comment in the chat? No. He said there may be an opportunity to do ham licensing through the scouts soon. Stay tuned. Boom. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be neat. And I'm all I'm all kitted up for it now. I got the uh, I think I got four of these that I've used before. And then I got a four pack of these to review. Uh, TID radio was nice enough to send all four of them, and I promptly gave one away. So Jacob, if you want one, let me know. I'll give you one. Um, it's not a bribe or anything. He's, he's still bribe he's bribing you still. No, it's not a bribe. Not a bribe. Yep. I should what do those. Uh, what was the four pack going for? Do you recall? I don't know. Yeah, see that this is this is a common interaction that 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 you'll learn when when you get deep into the reviewing culture. People will ask, "Oh, that's cool. What did it cost?" I'm like, "Free." I don't know. They, they sent me an email. Said, "Do you want it?" <laughs> um, but I should know when I write the review, I'll look it up and document it in the review sometimes. Although usually I don't for consumer stuff because prices change and then it, it's out of date. So I'll, I'll put a link that says, click here. If you want to check the price, the current price. Talk about you. Hands, I know it's, uh, it. yeah. Yeah. We don't so have any seizures or anything out there. Oh, so let me show you something else since uh, oh, I'm going to show a couple things here. TJ is going to get excited by these because when we go to Fire Expo. I'm already excited. Here, here shortly. Simmer down. Uh, when we when we get to the Fire Expo, uh, there is a distinct possibility we'll be camping. So this is a power oh, I'm pack sure. I'm going to take. It's a 24,000 milliamp hour, 86.4 watt hour power pack and it's got uh two regular usbs and a USB C on this end and then um an inverter built into it Ooh. so nice. you're on a laptop you can run stuff you plug in uh i don't think you can run like a blender off of this that would probably be too much maybe a small blender maybe if you're not crushing ice what about like a mini fridge? mini fridge for a little while mm, probably not we could try though. Right. I'm down for trying. So this will be part of the gear that goes down to Fire Expo, uh, so we can power whatever manly stuff we take with us. And we'll then, probably need it. So we don't well, have too many manly. Cords, put extension cords running all through the place. Like what is yeah. that? Oh, that's gear report. Those guys. Yep. So we don't have too many manly smells. We've got the solar shower that uh, may or may not get reviewed. You know, um, I suspect this could get us kicked out if no, we really review say, it. That's, that's sure so we're going to have to once, and then they'll be yeah. like, "All right, you guys got to leave." Once, just to get some pictures and video, and yeah. uh, and then we're good to finish the review. Like, hey, we're doing a review. Come on, we need to do this right here. Yeah, if they uh, if they attack us or tackle or you know anyway rough us up for any inappropriate stuff with that. We've got a first aid kit ready to roll here. Um, and these are things that the UST had sent. I think Jacob mentioned he got some stuff from UST. Here's some stuff from UST that we're going to be reviewing. And uh, let's see, we, we talked about the knife already. What is this? An LED strobe. This is one of those cool things that uh, when I'm doing the offshore sailing stuff, I, it's good to have some sort of... Uh, you don't want to get out there 
if you capsize offshore and you start drifting out and the sun goes down, good luck, dude. They're not going to find you till morning. Maybe this little strobe will save me at some point. So that's, that's what this is for. Um, cause that reminds me, I need to schedule and do some offshore sailing while I'm down in Florida. That'll be awesome. Yeah. All right. It will be awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I don't and sail I also either. got no camp. I don't sail like me. You can. I'll take you. So, so I got this maintenance rifle maintenance stand. Ooh. It's got like a built-in toolkit area to sit on the desk, and it's got uh, silicon rubber in here to to gently cradle and cup the barrel just the way you like it while nice. you're working on. Nice. Uh, and the butt stock. Yep. These are all things that are in the review queue here at Gear Report Headquarters. And uh, let's see. We didn't even talk about uh, Tent City. No, we City, didn't talk does, about Tent Yeah, so does anyone want an update on Tent City? I do. I um, want an update. You heard about it. I heard that uh, you uh, got the big ones up. Yeah, absolutely. So um, started with the smaller ones. And uh, let's see. I think, uh, I think yours was the second one that we put up, Jason. Um, so we made some mistakes on the first one. We got to yours. I'm pretty sure we got everything right on that one, I think. Pretty sure. Um, You'll find out. It, look, it looks pretty good. Um, and then, you know, and I was thinking this, the little ones would be easier, so we'll start with them. Well, lo and behold, we get up to the big ones, the 305s, and uh, they're easier like way easier. They're not beat up as much. They're, they're, um, a lot less work. They're heavier and they're harder to, to move around because they're, you know, five, 600 pounds. That's um, why they weren't used a lot. They're like, uh, but, um, fine. yeah. So like, uh, Oh, you know, I opened a window and I forgot to share the screen. I was about to talk about, okay, here's a picture, but I'm not sharing the screen. So there we go. Now I'm sharing the screen. So you can see here, we have, the mid awesome. we have the mid-size one on the left, and here's one of the big ones. It's got uh, two doors on each side and a door at the end, and there's another big one. And then one of the size that Jason has right here behind Jose Juan. And you can see Jose Juan there to give you kind of a size reference. Um, it doesn't look like it's that big, and then you realize he's six foot tall. And... Uh, you know, it looks like a little kid standing in front of a tent. So they're big and they're awesome. And I've only got, I think I've only got two listed right now. Is that right? Three. We've got one of the 305s, the very first 303, which unfortunately and fortunately, it's a really nice looking tent, but it's a really nasty looking tent it's like they rolled it in the mud and then rolled it up and put it away um, but the canvas and everything under it for the most part is in really good shape so it's i'm going to call it a a decent tent but we we got it marked at half price so that uh, someone won't feel too bad when they have to pressure the wash mud, it the mud it preserved way. it yeah yeah you know the, in hollywood they do mud mask right yeah they pay extra for that I'm discounting because of it, because I'm a rebel. Yep, but uh, but we got a batch. Uh, I think this weekend we're going to go through the end of them, and and the goal is by the time the day's over Saturday, we will have set up every tent there and uh, oh, assess them all. And shop you video. have to do a live a live tour. Oh man, maybe we'll set one up outside so we can do live. If the weather's good, maybe we'll do that. But in, it's in the bottom floor of a warehouse. Like there's a oh. warehouse up above it, another floor of the warehouse above us. So, you know, we're down in the dungeon and there's no signal. Oh. So, do a, do so, a walkthrough video of it. Yeah. I've been doing a bunch of walkthrough videos and uh, experimenting. I showed the, the Comica wireless microphone system that has a receiver and then two transmitters. So two people can be mic'd up. And Jose and I did a setup video and a takedown video of the 203 model. Um, and in each of them, uh, the mics, as it turns out, they were way overdriven and the audio is bad. 
So I'm debating, do we want to shoot it again to get good audio or just do a voiceover or just mute the audio and put it up or just put it up with real scratchy sound and audio? I can't decide. Um, but I've been shooting walkthrough videos of every single tent when we put them up. I just haven't, haven't had time to edit and post them yet. So What's I'll be getting on to that soon. Speaking of videos, uh, is anyone familiar with the platform Brighteon? Brighteon. It's one that I had not really heard much about, but um, I think it's called Brighteon. Dot com. Let's see. Um, and I signed gear report up for an account there. Uh, and I haven't actually been able to upload anything yet because they have some weird kind of uh, format requirements. Like all of the ways that I've exported video for YouTube don't work for Brighteon. Like I have to reprocess anything that I want to upload there. And I just haven't done that yet. So if you go search for gearreport.com on Brighteon, what you will find is an empty container page. Um, if you find it at all. Because we don't actually have uh, any content posted there yet. But hopefully I'll be able to get something up there at, at some point. Maybe the next thing I publish... I will export it in a format that Brighteon will accept, and then we'll be able to post some, uh, start posting some videos there. Yeah, they're not even showing us yet. Those bastards. Have to have to video edit on my phone and send it in. Well, maybe what it takes to hit a format that they'll take on the upload. Maybe. They don't tell you. They're just like, that one won't work. Figure it out. Oh, look at that. The Prince of YouTube has graced us with his presence. Hello, Ghost Tactical. Ghost, hey, um, if you're still out there, uh, you should get a tent from Jeff. We can practice in it. I'm not sure what you guys are practicing, but I will sell you a tent. Yep. Jeff will sell you a tent. He will. Um, anyhow, Ghost... Uh, let us know. We need to get together on uh, logistics for the Florida trip. Um, I don't know if you've already got something booked for where you're staying, if you're planning on crashing in the gear report compound, um, if we're just assuming that it's going to be... What was the, guy's, the guy on Andy Griffith that always slept in the, uh, in the jail? The drunk? Otis? Yeah. Otis. Otis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, so the facility there was actually a maximum security prison. So, it, it's really not out of the question to think Give that one cell. of us could end up sleeping in a prison cell at some point. It. it could be neat just to be able to say, "Yes, I've done it. I've done it. I was there." Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will definitely spend some time in in the prison while we're there. That should be interesting, I believe. <laughs> Hopefully, that prison and not another one. Yeah, whatever. A prison's yeah. a prison, right? I'll mm -hmm. call tomorrow. That's what they always say. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff won't answer. He'll be building tents and stuff with no signal. Yeah. So today I put, um, I didn't even go to the warehouse today. Um, I need to swing by. I'll probably, oh no, tomorrow's Thursday. I have to go find tent parts tomorrow. I know of a place that has some of these tents that they um, that they that they're sitting in a scrap pile. There's and a tent art store. I I need to get it. It's a metal recycling facility, but they oh, have okay. some of these tent frames, maybe even some fabric. And if I can pick up a couple end walls, then I can complete an extra tent or two. And if I can get a complete frame, even if part of it's broken then I can um, then I can use it to steal parts because right now I'm having to cannibalize what could be good tents to get parts to fix others. So if I can pick up like a donor frame, then that, that'll mean one more I can sell and I can retire off of these puppies. There you go. Just like I don't ammo. think I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to sell any more ammo. I have sold some ammo. I've sold enough ammo that I'm thinking I may stop. I may that just hoard enough. the rest of it. 
Yeah. And, yeah, and that's good. Ghost, I, I, I sent Ghost a wireless microphone. He said it showed up today. So that's good. Hopefully that'll yeah. work well. And maybe he can demo it at, uh, at Fire Expo. I'm still, I'm still buying some ammo when it shows up at the store. The, the frog bones had some, uh, they had some green tip and some, uh, some buckshot and two and three quarters. Oh, yeah. Wasn't terribly priced, but you know, we help try to help them out. They're local. So I bought a, yeah. bought a little bit. Yeah. You know? Uh, what, what, where's the fire expo? Where's that again? Oka something. Oka something. Amakle. All right. Amakle. Jason knows. Uh, can yeah. you get down there between the 22nd and 24? No, I've been sitting in Florida. I'm about to be back in uh, New York. The uh, I leave Florida on the 17th and then uh, back to work. You don't want you you to you leave. That's the way it works, right? Exactly. If, if you're close to TJ, you can you can go uh, hang with him for a little bit. If you yeah. want Humvee, he loves talking Humvee. I'm I down do. in Boca. <laughs> Boca? Boca? Ooh. Yep. That's bougie, bougie laying down there. I could hang out down there. <laughs> they got all the fancy stuff down there. Yeah. So up here on the Saddy Beach in the, the little barrier island. Hmm. Okay. So all right. who else has got stuff that they're going to review? Mitch, Mitch said no. I don't know if Jason does. You see, I'm wearing a hot suit. That's what it says, hot suit. Mm -hmm. This is something I'm reviewing. Uh, as part of the potential Philmont Trek gear for me, it's a uh, it's a fleece. I don't know if you can get if I can get close enough that you can see. Probably not. Is and people watching on their cell phone are like, "Does he think we can see that?" Um, there's a grid pattern in the fleece on the inside that's supposed to give it some better insulating qualities. So that's why I'm wearing this and not something gear report branded like I normally do. Cause I'm actually reviewing this and, uh, you know, wearing it to see how it feels. I was making sure it wasn't battery powered. Like your hunting stuff. Like this one, <laughs> check it. <laughs> you see the red. Yep. That means hot. Is it, is then, it cold in the house? What, what's going on over there? It's a, I, I'm cold all the time. So then white is medium. And then I push it again and they go to blue. Blue, the little icy blue color is the cool setting, which is, you know, less warmth. And then if I hold it, it, we'll turn it all the way off in theory. There we go. Now it's off. Yep. Because I'm not above carrying a battery pack and uh, all of that. I know you like some of those uh, vests that you were reviewing. The uh, what other electric uh, clothing have you uh, reviewed? Uh, I got it. I got a set of pants, and uh, I was so excited. I was like, "Oh, it's going to keep me warm in all the right places." But it wasn't. It it was it was one of these things where they came so close to to making a good product but they completely screwed it up. Um, mm. it, it's like the pants were sized for a small, normal sized American, not like I'm six, four, that, they, right. they're still too small for me, but the placement of the pads on the thigh and down around the shin and the different places around the pant were like right on top of each other. Like the, okay. the, the pads that should have been the heating pads that should have been 16 inches apart were like two inches apart. And I was like, no, this doesn't work. So it was, it was a huge disappointment. Um, but I Did keep you? seeing on Amazon vine, they have got the heated vest all over the place, gloves, mittens. I'll see hats that are heated. Did all these get, are battery you get, you get heated socks. I, I do. Oh, yeah, they're not up here anymore. There, the, the, the deer come to him because it's a warmer area in the woods. Yeah. They figured out. When he's I glow, him. basically. Yeah. And the light attracts them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you looking for heated stuff, Jason? Uh, ah, it's cold in New York. The uh, I haven't tried any of the uh, heated stuff. The uh, But uh, yeah, the vests sound interesting because I don't like wearing jackets. The uh, And... Uh, just keep the core warm kind of thing when I hop in the truck. Yeah. Yeah. I, if you want to, if you want to review one, I'll uh, tell me what size you wear and I'll, I'll send you one. Yeah. I'll, I'll review one. The, uh, 
probably just a large large okay i'll try to remember that all right so the way the vine stuff the amazon vine program works is uh, uh the, the reviews are pretty quick it's a standard amazon review a couple pictures a headline and then you know a description of what you like and don't like uh pretty quick and easy um but the not every product in Amazon's available. It's a uh, you know ten twenty thousand products depending on what day, and it's new stuff every day. And they cycle things through, and there, there's limited quantity of each thing. So it may be there now, but by the time you go to actually request it, someone else has claimed it. So I will keep my eye out for a size large heated vest, um, and see uh, when I'm able to find one of those that. Uh, so then I request it and it just shows up as an Amazon Prime delivery a couple days later. It's pretty cool. Poof, magic. Yep. It is. It is. It is I still magic. don't know how I got in that program, but it's awesome. Nobody knows, Jeff. <laughs> they don't, I don't think they know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It'll like show that. you bureaucracies. They get big enough that um, they start just doing things that don't make sense. And no one knows why. It's just that it is part of the machine. Yep. And the little guys get to benefit from that. So, yep. Works out. Now, what's everyone. going on with your battle wagon? The, uh, have you been uh, able to work on it? Oh, at all? yeah. So, I haven't been able to work on it much because I've, I've been like, I spent four days in a row in the dungeon, like all day for four days in a row. I put a 50 hour weekend in about four days of working on tents. So, I drive it there. The, the whole three minute drive to the warehouse, three minute drive back. That's all I did. But I did finally put, put fuel in it, put diesel fuel in it. So since I've had it, I was going to drain the fuel, but, but when we looked at it, it still looked really good and it, it didn't smell too bad. Um, and it's running good. So yeah, what the heck? We'll leave it in as long as it didn't cause him problems, put a whole bunch of diesel clean in with it and it was still running good. So we just ran with it. And I had burned that down to so the tank was almost empty. So now I filled it with a fresh tank of diesel fuel. So that that's a big deal that we got through that first tank. Um, and, and the transmission was only rebuilt once during that time, during that first tank of fuel. So I think that's a success. Um, and then so today I, I uh, off of Amazon Vine, I got some silicon tubing. And I replaced when they when they pull the armor off the trucks, they will cut oftentimes the um, windshield washer nozzle lines. Yeah. So I replaced those lines. So that should work now. Um, and I I actually installed a 24 volt I installed. I hooked up a 24 volt solar panel that also came in from Amazon Vine today. Um, I don't think that one's going to stay on the truck because it doesn't have a desulfator like the military version. And I, and I have the little military solar panel, but it, but that one's small and it doesn't really charge the battery. So maybe right. I carry it. And when we're doing some overland camping, like event camping type stuff, I have a solar panel that I can put up so that, uh, it replenishes the battery, not just runs the little desulfate battery maintainer. And how how large is that solar panel? It's uh, it's a ten watt, oh, okay. and it's probably that one. I'm going to guess it's about fourteen inches long and maybe eight or nine inches wide and pretty thin. And it's a rigid panel, really kind of interesting. Um, I I took pictures, but I haven't gotten them off my phone yet, or I would pull one up and show them. But those are products that are that are. Uh, in the review queue and we'll show up on the daily updates for the battle wagon three, uh, maybe tomorrow if I have time to post them, um, takes, it takes a half a day to go to that, uh, place where I find the tent parts. So I think I'm going to do that tomorrow before it rains again on Friday. So I may not get too many updates posted tomorrow. Got to talking about Humvees again. See, I know. So since we're on Humvees, uh, when I'm hitting any kind of little bump, I'm I'm feeling some something. It, it's making me wonder. I haven't pulled the the new trucks are supposed to have the the rev trucks are supposed to have a new kind of spindle nut lock that doesn't have the issues of the old one. When the spindle nut lock fails, the wheel falls off. Okay, that's why it's important, TJ. 
So okay. you're supposed to pull the covers off the spindles for the axles first thing. And um, all right, we'll see you, Jacob. Whoa, that was quick. Boom, boom. I, I clicked on it at the same time you did. Oh, I was going to say, how did it come boom, boom so fast? Great. Yeah. So anyhow, I haven't checked those yet, but I'm feeling something. So I need to pull the truck in the garage tomorrow and uh, roll around under it and yank on parts and see if anything's loose that needs tightened up because something is moving that shouldn't be, I think. And I'm now I'm getting paranoid since I haven't checked the spindle nuts because it's supposed to have a different type that don't give you a problem. I think I'm going to have to pull those covers and check them anyway because uh, – if you watched the interview with uh, Mike Vaden at Black Dog Customs, he was emphatic uh, when he said repeatedly, check your nuts. Yeah, so I need to check my nuts. Check your nuts, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to tomorrow. Okay, and so I'll probably take pictures of checking my nuts yeah. um, and share them. Once a month, I see a truck that uh, the tires come off because no one checked it. And uh, the... Uh, it's a uh, crazy see a uh, tire just missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, well, I, I think most people have probably seen there's a video going around on social media a year or two ago with a couple, I think it was probably in South America or something and they're walking and in the background, it's like a security camera and over their shoulder from behind them, you see a tire come off a vehicle and roll down a hill and bounce. And it hits the guy in the back of the head and drives his head into the pavement and he's done. Yeah. Um, and that looked like a normal, like a car or truck tire. Uh, and what, what, that'd be what 50 to 80 pounds probably. Yeah. Our tires are 170. Yeah, exactly. So it's a big deal when a Humvee tire comes off at, at 170 pounds of of rolling destruction. So that, I'm going to have to check those tomorrow. Hour. Yeah. Not, not yeah. doing 70. Hmm? Can't what? do 70 miles an hour, or do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, well, that's one of the benefits of the newer trucks. See, Jason was talking about upgrading his truck so that he could go 70 because he's got an early model that kind of tops out around 55 or so. And and that's where a bunch of us were saying, you know, instead of upgrading that truck, you may want to just get one of the newer models that has a whole bunch of other upgrades in it. So I, I think that's the right call. I think he's going to be happy. And now there'll be a his and her vehicle, so... I don't have to worry about uh, fighting to, to get my truck when my wife wants to take it. Oh, that's good thinking. Yeah. I have I'm to buy a new one. She's yeah, going to have to choose. Really good for her, though. You get all, all the, tell her you're getting all the really good stuff for hers, and then just like, yeah. Well, it's my, my other truck is mint. I did a, a, you know, it's been a passionate project working on it, and everything works. It's actually a really good truck. She's very comfortable in it. The uh, between her and the kids, it's the opposite in the uh, Crest household. How they, uh, my family loves the uh, Humvee because we just go to the beach and chill. So nice. Yeah. It's an uphill battle for Jeff all the time. It is my Every family. Day. I love them, but they're kind of snobby. <laughs> yep, they think they're too good for it. All right. I think that's about all I have to talk about right now. Awesome. So should we wrap it up? I think we're we're good. Cool. You're in charge. You're an awesome man. job, TJ. Yeah, I try. Something something different. I don't know about awesome, but I appreciate it. We we stayed on the rails more than normal, so that's good. Yeah, I, I tend not to jump off the rail. Well, you know, you start talking about humvees with you guys, and that's it. It's gone. <laughs> all right, are we done? I think so. All right, Jeff, you got to do you got to do the finger thing because that's that's you. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Get, so uh, remember, you got the end broadcast button. You click it yep. once, it'll bring up a little window, and you have to click it the second time. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have the little one up and ready? I do. Oh, I heard the clicky click. So we'll <laughs> see you at the range. <laughs>